morning, everybody. Uh, welcome to the House Committee on Government Operations and Military Affairs. Uh, it is Thursday, April 20th, um, and we're here to pick up our conversation about S-17. And I want to welcome the Washington County Sheriff. So would you like to introduce yourself for the record? And Absolutely. Good morning, everyone. My name is Mark Coolin. I know most of you from my time here in this building. Um, I am the newly elected Washington County Sheriff. Um, I would like to, to begin by stating up front, I can speak for almost every newly elected sheriff that we are as upset about some of the things that have happened in the past as everyone else. In a lot of ways, we are more upset because we are better than this. Um, with that said, working for a sheriff's department or being the sheriff is a labor of love. It is different than being any other type of law enforcement officer. I have worked for Montpelier PD, the sheriff's office, and the, uh, the Capitol PD. And sheriff's departments are strange. They are different um, and they're complex. With that said, after watching what happened yesterday, all the testimony in your discussions with the new draft coming, I'm going to defer my majority of my testimony until after we can see that, because I'd like to testify to, to what is going on currently. With that said, I'm going to give you a little bit of my background, because I've been deeply involved with a lot of these moving parts. Um, I did work for the sheriff for almost 15 years. I was third in command of the department before I came here to the Capitol. While I was there, um, I was in charge of all the details outside of patrol. So I dealt with all the um, property movements and restraining orders. I was in charge of the court staff. I was in charge of all the details that made the department money. Um, I was the high bailiff for 10 years. So a lot of the discussion, I have deep intimate knowledge of how it works. So with that said, if you have questions about that stuff or questions for a new sheriff, I would love to answer those for you at this time, but defer my commentary until after I, I see the updated version. So how can I help you with that set? Representative Higley. Sure, I've got a question. It was uh, spoken to, uh, I believe it was from um, Senator Norris in regards to his new position as a sheriff right off and how um, hard it was for him to not be able to, from the time he got elected to the time that he started to serve, uh, look at anything that uh, you know went on in the department and all that sort of stuff so he came into a cold so i guess i just ask you what you found and if there's any way that we can make that an easier transition for you so the, the previous sheriff, sheriff and i i would consider him a friend um he helped me get into law enforcement we have that kind of relationship so our transition was about as seamless as you possibly can get um, we didn't get into the deep financials leading up to it because I was already aware of it, but anything I needed, he would be there, he would take care of. A lot of the transition stuff, I would ask questions, he would answer it. We sat down with the bookkeeper, we worked together to go to the banks to transfer everything over. It was about as seamless as you could possibly hope for. Um, I have kept him on the rolls as a deputy because one, he wants to work, and two, uh, we've kept his state email and his department phone and things of that nature because there's still stuff that pops up that he's getting emails for that, oh, we forgot this, we forgot that. So both of us being reasonable people, it, it's a team effort and it's been perfect. Um, to improve it, obviously it's not that way with all departments. Um, there isn't any training for a new sheriff. Four of us uh, recently elected went to the National Sheriff's Institute a couple weeks ago, which was at the FBI Academy, which is high level leadership, uh, um, and training for sheriffs specifically. This is on the national level, um, which doesn't necessarily apply to specifically the Vermont, but that is the only sheriff specific training available, period. So some kind of training, especially for officers who have not worked for a sheriff's department before, that would be incredibly helpful because the complexities of it, if you come in cold, like the previous sheriff, Sam Hill, um, came from Barry City PD, and he, he told me the story about three weeks in, he called his former chief trying to get his job back because he was way in over his head. So some kind of supports that could be put in place, um, some kind of training, how that would work, not a clue, but that would be incredibly beneficial. I didn't necessarily need that because I'd worked there for you know, a decade and a half. Thank you, Mark. One of the, the questions that we've had that I think you're touching on is that uh, it really matters who gets elected and there's a little bit of like 
a, a little bit of luck sometimes in terms of just exactly who decides to run for that office and then what they show up with, whether it's, you know, they could have a great law enforcement experience and be an absolutely incredible law enforcement officer and maybe not have the financial management skills or the, the technical skills to do the kind of reporting and some of the requirements that modern law, law enforcement management requires. And so that 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 uh, supporting and professionalizing and having some supports for the sheriffs is, I think, a theme that you're going to see in the draft that, that we'll hopefully see from Ledge Council a little later. But uh, Representative Morgan, and I'll go to you, Representative Jay. Thank you. Uh, Yes, sure. So the that training at Quantico, how long was it? Just curious. It was uh, to, to do Monday through Friday. We were there Sunday to Saturday. But One week. Yeah, just a week. But and okay. extremely long days. Is this something you think is transportable to, like, if we put it at our police academy or something? Just, I don't it, know, it is not. They, they bring in um, a few different sheriffs from around the country to act as mentor sheriffs, okay. and uh, it, it's a national based program, okay. and they run three or four sessions a year. Our class size was 25. Um, so it's it's available for anyone who applies to go. It's just a matter of when you get in because they try to keep a certain uh, mix of small and large and you know, sheriff's departments in that class. Yeah. Um, but it's free. It doesn't cost a dime. The okay. feds pay for everything. So anyone who applies can go. So it's just they need to actually do it. So they always you right there in Quantico. How is you everything? Everything. Nice. Turnkey. Okay, so I'm just curious if there's something we can uh, anyway, it's something to consider. So thank you. Um, was your uh, election, were you running against each other or had he decided he He decided it, 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 a 39 year career, he had had enough. Okay. <laughs> so I ran unopposed. Um, but for years, everyone assumed I would run for sheriff and I was, everyone's like, yeah, you're the next sheriff. Well, okay, that might have been the case, but it turns out I was the only one that ran. Do you have any information or uh, insight uh, experience on um, elections that are contested and uh, those transfers of power going well versus not um, versus people who choose to step down? There's I can only speak to to stuff I have heard. I have no direct experience with that because we had no turnover in my department. For the most part, things have always seemed to go well in the last few ones anyways there was always the if it was a contested election it was lost there's a little bit of the sour grapes had been there but for the most part people were reasonable about it and, and turned things over um the, the most recent example in orange seems to be a, a bit of an extreme that most i've ever heard in my 20-year career at this point so um for the most part i think people have been reasonable and it's gone well okay. thank you and the, just to clarify that it, it did seem like there were there were eight or nine new newly elected chairs eight. like yes. most of those transitions seem to go smoothly and without incident i think the, the one that you mentioned if i'm not mistaken the incoming sheriff uh announced that they were sort of taking over the administration of the office prior to february 1st this is if i remember that story correctly so i am friends with both the new sheriff and the former sheriff and um, they both are, I, the best I can say, I love them both. They were both in the wrong and they both needed to put on their big boy pants. <laughs> Fair enough, I, we will not press you on, on that. I just wanted to make sure the committee knew what you were referring to here. Uh, Representative Cooper of Randolph. <laughs> Never mind. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Representative Hango. Thank you. So I, like the sheriff here, I don't know what's coming in your draft, but I just scribbled a few notes about um, training that would be really helpful, I think, for new sheriffs. And I'm thinking <coughs> like five different areas, um, how to interact with various law enforcement and emergency personnel um, throughout the county and the state, statewide. Um, office management procedures, um, for somebody who's never run an office personnel management, for someone who's never overseen personnel before, financial management, um, working with constituencies and um, training on outreach, and transition and succession planning for not only um, someone who is incoming, you know, who do they reach out to, who's been there before, who can help them in their new position, but planning for 
who they're going to hand off to eventually in the end. Does that cover it, do you think? Anything else you'd like to add? That covers most of it. Um, the financial stuff seems, from my experience, seems to be the most challenging for many because most people come from a PD where you don't have to operate a business. You have your budget, you work your budget, relatively simple. Um, I am on a board of many nonprofits. I'm the president of one right now. Finances <laughs> were not a problem for me, so but for many it is. The personnel matters. Um, most of the time when somebody runs for sheriff, they have enough law enforcement experience that the interaction with the public, the interaction with other agencies, the leadership, the management, because almost everyone is, is a shift supervisor, if, if not higher. So that is really low down on the totem pole. The financial piece and uh, just being able to manage uh, a large business type operation is, there's nothing more important than that, really. Great, thank you. Any other questions for Sheriff Poole? Great, well, Sheriff, thank you for sharing your perspective. Um, I am seeing that Legislative Council has emailed me um, a draft, uh, so I will be um, hopefully posting this in just a moment. I just want to take a quick scan here and make sure we are on the, the same page and it's included. And then um, we're going to take a break while the machines of that, the machinery of getting that posted happens. Got a couple people testifying. Uh, I asked uh, our charter team to come in and talk about something completely different. So if there's nothing else for Sheriff Pullen, I'll let him go for now. <laughs> so again, once the draft is released, let me know that I would like to come back to speak to it. And again, my office is, you can see it out the window right here. So thank you all for your time. We'll thank be, you. We'll be getting it posted shortly. And then um, Legislative Council will be here from now through uh, about four. Have a good day, y'all. Thank you. Thank you.